Zach from Barron, Wisconsin. Hi, Zach. Hello. Look at the TARDIS blanket behind you. I, you wouldn't be a Doctor oh. Who fan, would you? Oh, just a little bit. Oh, good <laughs> on you, mate. Classic series. <laughs> Look at Anyone this. Anyone with common sense, I figured it's right. Yeah, yeah. This Is this your man cave down here? Well, it's just a living room. I would do some cleaning up in here, and I get some glaring in that window. So ah, I figured smart. I'd start covering. Ah, cunning. You, you never know when a Doctor Who blanket's going to come in handy. That's Always right. keep your towel ready. So what can we do? What can we do for you, Zach? Well, I've got this Raspberry Pi three. Ah, bike. I figured out a few things on it. How exciting! My my Linux is very rusty. I haven't messed with it for well years, and printing is one thing I'd like to get working on there. And I don't know how to do it. Um, yeah, Linux uses something called cups for printing. One of the nice things about Linux, of course, is it's supported by uh, enthusiasts. And one thing enthusiasts have a lot of is old printers, right? Okay. So the older the printer, the more, the more likely <laughs> it's well-supported with cups. Isn't that weird? So, uh, Jerry, is it, Jerry, did you find this article on the How To Geek? It's how to add a printer to your Raspberry Pi. I'm going to show you. Actually, I'm going to pull up. We have a Raspberry Pi too, but it's very much. It. Yeah, it's very much the same. And I uh, yesterday walked through this article and uh, did exactly uh, what the article suggested. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to do apt-get. Have you ever done an apt-get? That's how you install software on Linux. You're going to sudo apt-get install cups. Okay which is the common universal printing system or something like that. The next thing you're going to do is right there I've got the command, which is open up and edit. I'm using nano to do this. The cups conf file, the configuration file, which is an etsy slash cups slash cupsd.conf. And once we open it up, most of this you can ignore, but they talk about what to do. First thing I did, and you don't have to do this to get the printer working, but it sure makes it easier, is open it up for access from your network. You can now use another computer to log in to the CUPS printing system on your Raspberry Pi. That way you don't have to okay. sit in front of your little tiny Raspberry Pi and yeah. do all the work. You actually SSH'd in. SSH is also enabled on Raspbian. You're using Raspbian, the uh, Linux distribution that comes with the Raspberry Pi, I hope. Yeah, I've yeah. got the newest version already Good. on there. So Yeah, in fact, before you do apt-get install CUPS, you want to do apt-get update and apt-get upgrade to make sure you have the latest uh, distro, di you know, latest software and the latest mirrors. Uh, there's also a few other editing things you're going to do. You're going to allow local in a couple of places. Again, I, I won't do all the details here, but it's just really editing a text file. You're going to add a few lines, and once you do that, uh, you'll be able to run CUPS from another computer. CUPS runs on port 631. So if, you, if you're if you on your internal network, the same network, you can actually just go to your Raspberry Pi. Up here, we're on Wi-Fi, as you will be, because you've got the Pi 3 as built-in Wi-Fi. And if yep. I hover the mouse over the Wi-Fi uh, icon there, let me do that again, you'll be able to see what your IP address is. There's many ways to do this. This is the easiest. 10.140.8.124. So I'm going to enter in, in this computer, 10.140.8.124, and then I'm going to add 631. That's the CUPS port. And if all goes well, yeah, that's I'm now talking to the Raspberry Pi on my computer here. And here's the CUPS interface, the standards-based open-source printing system. I didn't know this, developed by Apple for OS X but it's used uh, by every Unix uh, system I know. You can read more about it on this website, but what you're gonna do is go to administration and, uh -huh. no, no, that's okay, that's normal. It's because it's, um, uh, you have to log in. I'm not sure why I'm not getting the login. Let me go to uh, log in and see if that helps. You'll be asked, eh, maybe not. You'll be asked for the login, which of course, unless you've changed it, is pi and Raspberry. Pi is the user, Raspberry is the password. Let's try it one more time. Default, that's... Yeah, the default, unless you change it. You know, I, I don't know, I was in there earlier. I don't know why I'm forbidden now. There's a couple of things you'll see immediately. First of all, there's no certificate on your Raspberry Pi. So your browser's gonna say, hold on there. You're not allowed in. This is uh, unsafe, and you just go, yeah, yeah, I know it's unsafe, and you do it anyway, because you're not on the public internet, are you? What you'll do is you'll get the certificate warning, you'll get the login, once you do that, you're going to search for a printer, and it's actually going to be very easy. It'll see what printers are on your network. Is, is the brother uh, networked or USB? It's networked. Oh, even oh, easier. Excellent. So it's already on the Wi-Fi. 
The only issue, and you'll see this if you go to the CUPS document, there it is, yeah. Add printer. It'll actually find the printer. Uh, and the real question is, do, is there a driver for that specific model? It'll show you a list of drivers. I wish I could do it because I could actually show you the list of drivers it does. It's really kind of cool. Uh, if the exact driver is not there, an older printer, a brother probably will be. But if it's not, try, you know, recent... Uh, Something rather, in the MFC range. Uh, yeah, in that, in, that, in that range, they'll have a variety of different printers that you could probably... Uh, figure out one that works. You're going to try to get a driver that works. In some cases, like uh, Epson, I have an Epson printer at home. I was actually, Epson makes Linux drivers, so I was able to actually add a driver uh, by installing it on the uh, Raspberry Pi, and it worked fine with my Epson printer. So nice. if you don't find one exactly, check with Brothers, see if they have a Linux driver. One of the things that, you know, I always uh, try to patronize companies that decide to provide Linux drivers. Yeah. It'd be so, so nice the more of these companies support it. I agree. I mean, they, they, as a matter of course, they do it for Windows. Windows. Microsoft doesn't write drivers for all the hardware it supports. No. They expect the manufacturer to do that. And because so many people use Windows, they always do. That's really the difference. It's not that Linux is harder or weirder. It's easy. It's just they, they have to do it. And I always support companies. NVIDIA is very good. Intel's very good. And Epson's very good. They write Linux drivers. So mm. it's very often the case that you can get a proprietary driver from the manufacturer that works just fine. Indeed. In fact, a uh, listener just posted up a list of, uh, of Linux drivers. Oh, good. So. All right. So, uh, openprinting.org, you'll see all the different drivers uh, available. I'm guessing that that printer you have, I'm not sure what the model is, but I'm guessing that CUPS will have it. If it does, it's just like installing a printer on Windows or Mac. You select okay. the printer, you say OK, and now you can print to it just as you would with anything else. Uh, I was going to actually print, but now that I can't get into CUPS, I, I won't, but uh, but because we I was had this set up on our uh, house network, and I should be able to print to our local printer. I was able to see it earlier, so that's I mean that's easy. It's very much like doing it uh, on any other computer. You need a driver. The printing system is called Cups, mm -hmm. and uh, pretty much that's all you need to know. But it will say, well, this link is great. Just Google how to add a printer to your Raspberry Pi How to Geek. Excellent article. How to Geek. Yeah. Okay. In fact, look, that's a brother they're doing. Oh, right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's an older article, but, you know, it, the steps still work exactly the same. You'll see it's a different version of CUPS. CUPS has been updated considerably since then. All Cups. right. Hey, it's nice to talk to you. What it's do you, nice what do, you do, Zach? Oh, I've just got an office job. I work at a local casino. Nice. Uh, in Lake. That's oh. good. So you could just say, well, no, I deal craps. No, that wouldn't be right. Uh, <laughs> well, anyway. <laughs> I work on the roulette wheel. <laughs> nice to meet you, Zach. It's great to talk to nice you. Nice to meet you. Thank Take you. Care. Cheers. Have a good night, mate. Yeah. It's, you know, the, I have mixed feelings about this. I love Linux. Mm. I use it all the time. And I wish more manufacturers supported it. Yeah. Because usually the problems you come up against are problems where you have a manufacturer that hasn't written a driver for that hardware. But once it works... Man, it's just nice. It's solid. Well, You're using it, Linux right now. Yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of programmers know Linux and, lo and love Linux. Yeah. So th I think where we, you we get companies that do put a lot of printer drive, a lot of Linux drivers up there, it's generally because they've got enough people in the company who love right. it and just say, yeah, we should do this. Or an enthusiast has a brother printer and says, I'm going to darn it, I'm going to make this work. Yep. And writes a driver for it. But you're running Linux on your Chromebook. Everybody yep. using an Android phone is running Linux. Half the sites you visit uh, on the web are running Linux. It's I'm actually tempted. I've been reading up on how to, you can... Crouton. You, you can, yeah, exactly. Did it last week. Crouton on this. How is I it? will help you. During the break, you and I will put Crouton on yours. It's <laughs> awesome. It's awesome. Then yeah. you have, you, because it, it runs in parallel. Exactly. So it, uh, it's not emulation. It's literally running on this hardware. And uh, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, it just takes some space, that's it. And it's not much yeah, space. Yeah, uh, you know, it's not as though you keep a lot of stuff on here. Exactly. You keep it in the cloud. That's what you it's know, designed for. People, I remember computers that had two gigabytes, and we thought that was a lot. There's I can like 32 when, gigs on these things. When the first gigabyte hard drive came out, we sat like, in the office, wow. turning it over on our hands, going, wow. this is stupid. Nobody's ever, <laughs> ever going to need this much data. Uh, then they invented Windows. And Napster. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Napster, that's the one, yeah.